One of my favorite improvements of Windows 11 over Windows 10 has to do with the multitasking capabilities and the new control you get with snapping. Windows snapping is the ability to quickly move windows to sides of the desktop, corners, things like that, and they have improved that workflow significantly on its own, as well as introduced new snap layouts. And we're going to be covering that in today's video. We've been covering a gamut of Windows related topics here on the channel, so get subscribed and enable notifications so you can stay informed. I'm Abel's Vox, here to make tech easier and more fun. And let's jump in with Windows 11 snapping. So if you are unaware, snapping is the ability to quickly snap or move windows and resize them to specific sides of the screen. This started out, I believe, in Windows Vista or Windows 7 and was super bare bones at first. You could just quickly move apps to the side of the screens and things like that. But the, this feature never really evolved to account for new developments in display technology like ultra wide monitors or anything like that. And Windows 11 has kind of revolutionized it. So the default controls for it are the windows key and then the arrow keys so you can do left and right to go to the different sides and then if you go left you know to the right and then up arrow that gets it into the top right corner things like that and now you get access to new snap layouts by hovering over or long pressing on the maximize button and this will help you start new layouts with a variety of different layouts available to organize your windows a little bit better so the example layouts that it gives you are windows side by side one big window with one skinny window on the side so for example if you have like a chat program or a twitter feed or something on the skinny right window and then your main work window taking up the majority of the space you get two different vertical three-way splits where it's just three evenly sliced windows or a big e center window and two thinner windows on the side some of these are going to be a lot better for ultra wides as well and then you get for example a sample layout where you have a big window on the left half of the screen and then two windows on the top right quarter and bottom right quarter of the screen and things like that so it gives you some sample layouts to start working with and when you choose one of the layouts it'll move the window that you've chosen on to the main position here and then you can choose other windows that you have open to fill the rest of the layout which is pretty neat however you have a lot of control over how snapping works in these settings so click start go to settings and then go to multitasking here you can actually disable snapping entirely if you accidentally use it you know if you accidentally find yourself triggering it and you don't actually have an interest of using it and you know or you just find it distracting or whatever you can just turn it off however I do find it to be incredibly powerful and it does give you a lot of control here over what you can do with it for example you can show what can be snapped next to a window after you've snapped one so if I move this window to the right side it will automatically you know let me choose another window to fill the left side this is pretty cool and can save you a little bit of time save you some clicks as you're managing your windows but if you don't want that if you just want to manage one window at a time you can actually turn that feature off you can turn on or off the ability to show layouts when hovering on maximize as we just talked about like you can just hide that feature entirely if you don't want it showing up like if you accidentally leave your mouse on maximize sometimes or you get distracted when it shows up you can turn that off it doesn't turn off the layouts it just turns off the preview that it gives you you can also enable or disable an option to show layouts when you're hovering over an app's icon on your taskbar. So if you have, say, your Word document as part of a layout already, and then you switch to another window that's not part of that layout, and you hover back over the Word document icon on your taskbar, it will, it will show you both the preview of that window itself as it normally would, but then it will also give you a preview of the bigger layout that it's a part of. And you can actually kind of effectively maximize the Word document and type in it and still go back to that layout, which is incredibly powerful. Next up, there's an option to allow you to snap windows without going all the way to the screen edge. So previously, you would do it by just dragging it till your cursor hits the edge of your screen and that will snap it. It'll like pulse the cursor and snap the window, but you can have it do it once you are dragging a window just to that side. Uh, this one you may want to disable depending on how you move windows around because you may find it either getting in the way and accidentally getting triggered when you don't want it to, whereas hitting the edge of the screen is a lot more controlled. Or you may find it whenever you're dragging windows between monitors, like you can usually ignore the edge of the screen one, but if it's triggering both for the side of the screen and the edge of the screen, you can find it getting your, in your way, so you have the option to turn that off. There's an option to automatically resize your window to fill the space of the specific snap section that you move the window to. So if you move the window to the right hand side for the snap, by default it fills in that entire right side with the window. But there could be situations where you want to keep the window the same size, you just want to like lock it to that part of the screen. And so you can turn this off if you're that kind of person, I guess. 
There's an option to automatically resize adjacent windows when you're adjusting a snap size. So, for example, if you have two windows side by side, taking up, you know, the vertical slices of the screen, and you resize one to be bigger or smaller, it will automatically adjust the one next to it to be bigger or smaller to fill in the rest of that space. I find this really, really handy, but you may be resizing windows for specific reasons and not want this, so that option is available to you. There's an option to show your app layouts based on the specific virtual desktops that you create, which we'll touch on in a moment. Uh, you can either have it just show you the apps available on the virtual desktop you're currently on, or you can have it show all applications across all of them to kind of bridge them back together. All of this is super powerful. There's quite a learning curve to it if you're not familiar with it, if you've never really messed with this before in previous Windows versions. If you've been a Snap user in previous Windows versions, this is just a nice upgrade that gives you more control that I think most people will appreciate a bunch of videos out like this for a specific you know launch like Windows 11 is a lot of work and I can't publish them all on the same day so you can actually watch them all at once which I would like to do but YouTube's notifications and algorithms and stuff don't really allow for that that's why I've built my own video streaming site with my creator friends that allow me to not have to deal with a lot of that stuff the site is called Nebula and we've partnered with Curiosity Stream Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD Thomas Frank and low spec gamer my videos are higher quality they're ad free and often extended from the YouTube versions and sometimes significantly earlier when I'm doing a bunch of videos at once like this. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to form an educational documentary power alliance where we worked out a deal with the link in the description below where if you sign up for Curiosity Stream you get access to their library of thousands of educational and documentary titles but you also get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. They're also offering a 26% off their annual plan deal making it less than $15 per year year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which is just kind of bonkers. While you're there, check out Secrets of the Brain to learn about how the brain works and to see a neuroscientist go and study a bunch of unique neurological conditions, which I found really informative and just kind of interesting. Like we, we focus on education and teaching a lot here, but learning how the brain works is kind of a big meta part of education as well. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and sign up for under $15 per year for both sites. It's crazy. Just do it. While we're in the settings menu, you also have taskbar settings that we covered in a previous video. This allows you to show or hide the icons for, say, your widgets, your search, and the task view. The task view is actually really cool because it shows you open windows, open snap layouts, and multiple desktops if you create virtual desktops, which are pretty cool. We will be talking about that in a future video, but it, having that task view button, most people want to go ahead and hide this real quick because you're not used to seeing it. You just want it out of your way, and I get that. That's fine. On a lot of my computers, I do it. But the task view, if you use your multiple app layouts, will actually show you those different layouts, and that can be really handy to navigating your way through a bunch of open windows. Lastly, in the multitasking settings, you get an option whether you include Microsoft Edge tabs in Alt tab or not. You can include like the most recent five or three or all of them, which is pretty cool. A little handy to be able to Alt tab through your tabs as well. You can also enable or disable an option where if you grab a window to move it around and you shake it real fast, it'll minimize all other options. This was one of the early snapping features and it seems to be off by default now, but you can turn that on if you'd like. Do you like these changes to the snapping in Windows 11 or do you find them to be just too distracting and don't even bother? Are you a one window maximize the whole time kind of person or are you a divide up your desktop into a bunch of different windows? Let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Join us on Discord, discord.gg slash eposvox and remember, be kind, rewind. Playlist link in the description with all of the videos that we've covered so far.